hey there cool people shubham just mentioned one of the reasons of flutter success is how smooth it makes the animations and delivers app at 60 fps so rendering in flutter is about going into the details how it actually happens but before diving into the rendering part let's see where that resides so here you can see this is a sketch of the overall architecture of flutter so at the bottom at the bottom there is an engine and the engine exposes a very low level api then then above it th there is a framework which itself is composed of several layers the stock is going to about the lower level the re the rendering layer which is responsible for organizing the screen and uh, and allocating space on screen for different widgets and then actually making those widgets appear on the screen lastly the top framework is the application layer which where you actually write your application right then this is the full flutter pipeline of how things go step by step so if we go step by step maybe you you get some user input then maybe you have some animations running then you get a chance to build widgets then the main part comes up till this the de the developer has the control over the development of the app right but the magic happens after this then then after that the rendering phase itself is consists of three layers three parts first is the layout step which is about positioning and sizing elements on the screen then there is the painting step which is about figuring out uh, what those elements actually look like then the compositing step basically stacks them together with draw order with draw order so that they can be composed on the screen as one thing and then finally the last step the rasterization step where the abstract representation of what you are going to draw makes up to the actual physical pixels on the screen so this talk is going to be focused on the layout painting and compositing this all qu looks quite complex right so what if i tell you what if i tell you the principle behind flutter is just simplicity the basic design principle behind the rendering part of the pipeline is simple hence making it fast so basically so basically if we use simple straight forward forward algorithms with very well understood properties then we can make them go fast by taking advantage of the properties and optimizing them the three main rules are one pass linear time layout simple box constraints which generate expressive layouts and structural repainting using compositing so let's go dive into more deep and it all starts with laying out stuff what stuff the widgets of course so it in flutter the layout phase is constituted of two linear passes the passing constants down the tree and passing of layout details up the tree the process is quite simple the parent if i show you the parent this this widget the parent passes certain constraints to each children constraints to each children and the, these constraints are like saying okay do whatever you want as long as as long as you respect those constraints then the child that same that same child generates new constraints for itself and passes them down to the to its own children passes them down to its own children right so this goes on until we reach the leaf node then the then the bottom is node then figures out the layout details of itself for example if the parent passes down the maximum width can be 500 pixels so the child widget can say well i can use it use all of it up or or i can use only 100 pixel of the width right so these are the layout details which the widget has to send back to its parent and this goes on and on until it reaches the top of the tree or the maximum limit okay so this is the layout procedure let me give you some example like the basic layout constraints layout details and constraints that that we speak of comes from the layout protocol which we use which we use in flutter there are two main layout protocols the box protocol and the sliver protocol the sliver protocol is not used that much but the box protocol is used for displaying objects in a simple 2d cartesian coordinate system xy plane right 
while the sliver protocol is used for displaying objects that react to scrolling. In the box protocol, the box constraints that the parent passes down to its children are called box constraints. These constraints determine the maximum and the minimum width and height that each child is allowed to be. Right? Quite simple. Let me give an example. Uh, for example, the parent might pass some, some constraints, some box constraints to the ch child and the green region which you can see are the constraints which the child can print itself on. For example, the parent passed down the, the minimum weight to be 150 and maximum weight to be 300 as you can see and the minimum height to be 100 and the maximum height can, can be maximum. So the, the, the corresponding green region is a child, is, is the region where the child can print itself. So the layout details, the size and, and, and the width are actually the size constraints, the layout details, the size constraints. So we know how layout is, is taking place. After, after that, we paint. So painting is nothing but, but determining visual appearance. So how do we paint? It's, it, it's like quite simple process if anyone can think of. We just go down the tree and we just paint as the, as the positions or offsets are, are provided. Right? It makes quite sense. Right? That's not the complete truth. That's not how the things work in Flutter. Not quite so. The complication with painting is that you have to deal with layers. So if you were to, if you were painting everything to one buffer, to one layer, then that, then that would be end of story, right? But it turns out painting in one buffer is very constraining, very limiting. So for example, this, suppose this yellow piece here is a video widget and the, 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 the widgets uh, on top, of, on the top layer are the, are the, are the red region and the bottom layer are the green region, right? So the tricky thing is painting, in painting is basically figuring out which layer the painting command should go to in what order. So you think these layers as, as like buffers of pixels. We don't actually make pixels out of them, but we keep them as vectors. So how do we corresponding, how, how do we correspond these layers to corresponding widgets? Let's see that. So during the paint phase, we go walk the tree in depth order and then we paint into these layers. So here the green bubbles are painting into the green layer, right? So number four here is, it's a video, number four being the yellow layer, some uh, that needs to be composited in paint order correctly. So he gets painted in his own layer itself after being print, painted the background, the green colors, right? So he gets painted in his own layer and then everything that comes after number four in paint order gets drawn into the red layer. So the interesting thing to observe is that it's not quite straightforward as, as you can see, on the second row, on the left, he is, he's got some green and red both at once in, in, in a single widget. So what, that, what does that mean? It means that you, you can imagine that I, I painted the background for two and three and four at first, the green layers. And on the way up, he decided he wants to paint some more things. Then the fifth painting will happen. So the, so the child is saying, paint me first and then paint this after me. So now let, let's see what actual paint data flow looks like. So what we do is, well, it's not just the offsets that we are sending down the tree. There's actually stuff coming back up in one pass walk. In particular, the target layer. So the, so the layer you often draw into something, your children tell you what next part the, of the painting is, is gonna be. So you tell the children, you know, paint yourself over here. For example, for example, a child can say, go paint yourself over here. So he tells, the, the child tells to, to, its, to its parent layer or the layer afterwards, hey, you, hey, you should paint continue, you should continue painting this layer after me, after I'm done, right? So in, in programming terms, it's some sort of one pass down up algorithm. And you go one pass, then according to the widgets, you go up and down, up and down, based on the paint order, right? So the painting process here is done. So far is so good. So like in the rendering process, we only need laying out things and painting things. So why do we need more steps then? It, it's quite simple. So 
technically rendering is done but why do we need need more cells what what if what 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 if i say if these layers need to be repainted again and again with slight updates which can be seen in animations stacks and list view scrolling parts and anything it, it the complete viewport needs to be repainted again and again won't that be cumbersome that's where that's where compositing comes into play instead of repainting everything again and again we just shift those layers according to the changes thus making the rendering process much faster complex right let me explain you little bit let's take an example the scrolling widget it's quite simple everyone has used in their apps most developers has also built it so the scrolling widget here is without compositing this is without compositing and here the here the rendering will be done only up to the limits of the viewport and with each micro interaction each micro scroll and modification of the offsets the complete viewport will be repainted again again for every frame so that is quite resource consuming right so for removing that flaw we need compositing so with the same example if compositing is is going to take place it it would look something like this so let me explain how this actually works how how compositing takes place so you actually use a separate layer for each of the item for each of the widget right so in the scrollable list every color has a different separate layer so when so when i move the complete list the in the first frame everything is being built painted and then after that if we scroll no painting is has is going to be done again all i did was shift those boxes up and i don't repaint them just shifting of the widgets up and down based on the offsets so now i have i have this complete scroll view right i don't have to do any more work just as, as new widgets come into play we just paint it once and we and we just shift them according to the new positions we get right so this is like a sort of recycling list view of an infinite list you have limited things to paint but you actually are painting an unlimited list that's quite fascinating so this makes rendering more fast right so in the end there is just one more step called rasterization which takes these abstract composited layers and convert them into physical pixels that comes into your phone and hence you get a smooth 60 fps experience with this complete process let me there's there's one more one quirk which i should mention like you would have noticed in the simple approach I, it's not that it's not dependent on any platform i have never mentioned a platform word anywhere so it it directly means that cross platform is a side effect that just turned out to be feature right think about it that's it from my side thank you